the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that bears trust to live on what the world I seem to have um, heard Baccarat music all my life. Sometimes I didn't know it was Baccarat. But there are tunes that I can take right back, way back. I mean, this, this man had, uh, I'll quote you some figures, a 70, uh, top 40 singers in the US and 50 top 40 singers in the UK going back to the 60s. He's still writing music now. You can't go through a day if you listen to any sort of music at all of the light of variety. You can't not hear a background song. But for everyone. I was doing uh, uh, a James Bond concert um, in Udense in Denmark and one of the tracks that the orchestra were rehearsing was the theme to Casino Royale and uh, it was fantastic. I hadn't heard it for a while and I had to remind myself that it was a Burt Bacharach composition. And I said to my colleague at the time, I said, he said, now there's a concert. The only thing that's been all forgot like, was that last <coughs> yeah, yeah. After we had decided this was a wonderful idea to produce, um, I then uh, got onto the internet and convinced I was going to find 54 other concerts of Burt Bacharach music being produced around the world by different orchestras. I couldn't find one. You would only mean heartbreak for me. sat in a room, well actually known to be fair, Graham sat in a room on his own first of all and whittled, I don't know how many tracks you started with, but we got down to about a hundred and then we sat together and worked through these tracks, always bearing in mind the nature of our product that was going to be orchestral, so we wanted songs that were um, not too poppy and were accessible to a, a classical symphony orchestra. What I've tried to do in orchestrating them up to symphony orchestra size is to keep the original, keep the absolute feel of what was originally done, but expand it. So we've now got a string section of 40. So you have, you know, the, the lines can be more intricate, they can be more counterpoint, more harmony. But if there's a trombone solo, uh, or if there's a flute solo, like the beginning of Trains and Boats and Planes, they had alto flutes originally, we have alto flutes. So I've tried to keep it exactly as it was, just enhance it. In the same way uh, as Richard described it, to uh, enhance the orchestration, we wanted to do justice to um, the glorious harmonies, which is why we decided to go with a um, vocal quartet. Um, and we have reproduced um, as near as absolute possible the, the intricate and sometimes very tricky backing vocals. Time can We think we've, we hope we can develop a, a much warmer atmosphere within the concert hall. That is why all the girls in Spanish town follow you all around. Just like me, they long to be close to you. They're great tunes, and 
orchestras love to play great tunes, whether it's right Manonoff or Mahler or whatever, they love playing big strong melodies. It's not just 4-4 four, four or 3-4. Anyone who had a harp, for example, changes time every bar for 11 bars. And it's the structure of the song is quite complicated, so the musicians can appreciate that. Although when the audience listen to the complex rhythms and the complex time changes, they don't know they're there because they, he fits the lyric really well. He, he writes the music to fit the lyric. So it's, it's playable, it's challenging, and they're great tunes. And we're delighted that since we did our first concert with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London, um, we have been asked to take the concert to uh, Birmingham with the City of Birmingham Symphony and to Manchester with the Manchester Halle. Three orchestras in the UK that in our wildest dreams um, we can't believe that you know so soon we're allowed to uh, or we've been invited to uh, take our concert there so that's a great start but of course there's many more orchestras there that we would like to hear from. <laughs> And the only concerts that happen, that we can find, or I have found, is actually by the man himself, and Mr. Backrack goes out on occasions, and he goes to Australia, uh, and obviously in uh, America, but he does very few concerts. Now. I said uh, in the first concert, I said, uh, you know, a lot of this music uh, to the audience is going to be it's sort of the soundtrack of their lives, and it certainly is with me. The pleasing thing was that the audience were really up for it. They were really responsive right from the moment we mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. and you could sort of hear intakes of breath, and every time you start another song, <gasps> that's the one. Yeah. 